So just come into a comfortable seated position. If cross leg isn't comfortable, you can keep your legs out in front in staff position, that's fine. Remember, stack your spine just like we do when we're standing. So ribs in and up. So those bottom ribs just go toward your spine and up toward your heart to get your core working and supporting your lower back. Shoulders down, shoulder blades toward your waist, and of course, crown to the ceiling. And we're creatures of habit, so go ahead and switch your legs around and restack everything. So get connected into both sitting bones evenly. Stretch up through your spine. And then bring your bottom ribs back even more and round forward for that forward bend. And then as you inhale, bring your heart forward and your ribs forward and look overhead, backward bend through the spine. So just a few times through that range of motion, exhaling and inhaling and just allowing your lung capacity to work with you as you go through that range of motion. <coughs> so again, just allow the whole spine to get a little bit longer as you come into the forward bend and as you go into the backward bend. So just keep lengthening through the whole spine. And then come back upright, and we'll do our side stretch. So fingertips down on one hand and the other arm out, palm toward the ceiling, bring it over your shoulder, slide over to the side, but keep both sitting bones, both hips down. So reach out through the top of your head and your fingers, and you can bend your elbow on that lower arm and bring it down toward the floor if you want extra stretch. The whole side of your body up toward the ceiling. And then inhale and slide back up and release your arm. And you can go ahead and switch your legs and we'll slide the other way. So fingertips down, everything's stacked, and arm out, palm toward the ceiling and right over your shoulder. Keep those shoulder blades down and slide over to the other side. And again, keep the arm right by your ear as you stretch out and push your hip down that you're leaning away from. So the whole bottom of your body remains connected. You can bend your elbow and get extra stretch if you love it or not. Your choice, personal practice, as always. And then again, inhale back to the top and release your arm down. Feel the sides a little bit more lengthened and stretched out. And take one hand to that opposite knee, other arm out in front for our twist. Stretch up through your spine and exhale and follow your hand to the back. Bring your hand down on the mat close to your body and stretch from your sitting bones up with the spine nice and open for your twist. And then ribs, hips, ribs, and shoulder turning. Deepening your twist. Go as far as you like, but not too far if your spine has a challenge. And then bring your hand back up, follow it around to the center, and release. And we'll switch our legs one more time before we do our twist the other direction. So again, sitting bones connected, stretch your spine apart, hand to that other knee, arm out in front, shoulder staying down. Reach the crown high and exhale, hand around behind you. Follow it to the back and drop your hand to the mat and then stretch from your sitting bones up. Exhale, turn your whole body, not just your neck, moving deeper into that twist. So hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turning toward the area behind you. And then bring your hand up, shoulder level, Follow it around back to the center and release. So feel your spine, your sides, your whole body just a little bit more energized. And we're going to start, but well, let's go into first child's pose. So find a good place that you're able to bring your hands out in front for an extended child's pose. <clears throat> so sink your hips back on your heels. 
And you want everything lined up. So arms right in front of your shoulders. And knees and heels and hips lined up. And then spread your fingers out and pivot up onto your hands and knees. And your hands should probably be a little bit in front of your shoulders for this position. And then come up on your fingertips and press your knuckles down and the base of your fingers down and your whole palm down. Get really connected into your hands. And then tuck your toes under behind you. And we're gonna come sliding onto the base of your toes and just lift your knees slightly off the floor. And then pull your ribs all the way in towards your thighs and make sure your arms are right next to your ears. And then push your hips straight up and then let your heels drop toward the floor. So we're in down dog position. You should be a nice straight back, straight legs as much as you can, heels pressing toward but not to the floor. And the hands should give you good support. Keep pulling your ribs back toward your thighs and lifting your sitting bones up toward the ceiling or toward the corner of the room. And just head toward your hands, don't tuck in your chin, and the whole body should be nice and straight. So if your shoulders are working too hard, that means you're not positioned so that your wrists, elbows, shoulders, and hips are lined up. So keep pulling back through the hips and up. And then bend your knees a little bit, walk toward your hands, and come to the front of your mat, and stand up into mountain pose. <clears throat> so we're going to start with our hands at the heart and elbows in toward your sides. And then looking at your hands, inhale and follow them up toward the ceiling. Just extend, lengthening through your whole spine. So down into your feet, up through your body, and then pull your thumbs back and keep looking at them as you come into a little back bend. So upper body more than lower back, but you can go as deep or as not deep as you and then following your hands, keep looking at them as you bring them towards your heart and pivot over and exhale, coming down and drag down. Take a moment and breathe, kind of lift your sitting bones and then slide your hands up under your knees on your shins, press your hands in, straighten your elbows, straighten your back, tuck your chin in a little bit so your neck gets a good stretch. And you're in that halfway up stretch with your spine nice and straight. And then exhale, release your hands back down, palms together, and inhale, coming back to your heart. And then again, following all the way up toward the ceiling, looking at your hands. Once more, a back bend if you like, or not, your choice, personal practice. And then exhaling, follow your hands again. Slowly be in the process, not rushing to the destination. Pivoting over and drag. Again, hands up and come into that halfway up stretch. And this time we're going to bend the knees a little bit. <clears throat> Bring your hands all the way down to the floor, right outside your toes. And then step your right foot a big step back for a lunge position. So let your hip come down. <clears throat> Make sure your positioning is good. Front knee over your ankle, toes straight ahead, and the knee stays right there, not caving in toward your arch side or out toward the outside of your foot. And then relax. If your hands aren't comfortably reaching the mat or the floor, you can have blocks or books underneath you for a little support. And then we're going to bring the knee behind you down and slide your toes back. See if you can be above the kneecap, not right directly on the kneecap, or you can put some padding under that knee if it's uncomfortable. We're just gonna let the hip flexor get a little stretch. So you can bring one hand to the front knee and then the other and come up and just allow your chest to go a little forward and shoulder blades down and maybe look up so that you get a good stretch through that hip flexor. And then exhaling, bring your hands back down to the floor. Tuck the toes under behind you and lift your knee, not your hip, so you're coming into that lunge position again. And then push forward 
and relax, rag down. Palms together, inhale, and again, slowly to your heart and standing up toward the ceiling. Come into the back bend and exhaling, follow your hands again all the way down into that forward bend. So as you're there in the forward bend, just relax, kind of lift your sitting bones, tuck in your chin, move your head maybe so that that neck doesn't get too crunched. And then bring your hands up into the halfway up stretch. So palms pressing into your shins right below your knees, elbows and back straight. Chin back a little bit toward your chest so that you're not crunching the neck. And again, exhaling, bending the knees, bring your hands next to your feet, and step that left foot back in a good lunge position. Again, make sure that that front knee stays right over your ankle. You want to be supported by the bones. You don't want to have that knee overextending, <clears throat> working too hard, or moving out or in because that destabilizes things. And again, get your positioning, and then bring the knee behind you down. Padding if you need it, or adjusting to the top, not right on the kneecap. And again, for that extra stretch, you can come up with your hands to that front knee and lift your heart and look overhead. Sink through the hip, just relaxing. And then exhale, hands down right next to the foot. Tuck your toes and lift your knee, not your hip, getting that good straight heel, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, line. And then push forward, relax and ride down. Notice you're releasing that hip that we were just stretching. And again, palms together, inhaling, and come all the way, extending up and into that back bend if you like. So take a moment there, chest high if you're in the upper body back bend. And then again, exhale all the way down into ragdoll. Hands up into that halfway up stretch. Exhale, bend your knees, hands to the mat. Step that foot back into your lunge position. Now this time, we're going to press the hands down and step that front foot back. Coming into plank position. Ooh, that's not good for my wrist. So wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Keep the hips slightly up if you're sagging in that lower back. Get the bottom ribs up, supporting it up toward your spine, toward your heart. And get heels, knees, hips, and shoulders lined up. And then bring your knees to the mat. Now this one's hard. Some people find it very challenging. We're going to bring the chest and chin between the hands, bending your elbows, keeping the hips up, and then slide forward onto your belly. Pull your elbows in, chest and chin forward, and then tuck that chin back, coming into a little low cobra. So remember, your hands don't support you in cobra. They're just helping position you. You want to make sure that your chest and Part of the focus, bring it forward and up. So lengthen through the spine, just sink through the bottom of your body. And then we're going to press into the hands. And you can come to the knees first, tuck your toes under, and we're going to go back up into down dog. So you want to have the feet right in front of your hips and the sitting bones going up and the wrists, elbows, and shoulders lining up with the hips. So nice straight back, nice straight legs, sink the heels toward the floor. And then this next step is the next hard part. So we're going to step the right foot between your hands. You can do it and not think about it, and that's fine. If you don't quite make it, you can use your hand to move that ankle so that the foot gets back between the hands, or you can follow these instructions. <clears throat> now to come up on your toes, lift your ribs, inhale, look forward, and take that step. So you should be back in lunge position. So make sure, again, the knee and ankle are lined up. Again, bring that heel 
forward if you need to to get that right alignment. And then push off from the back foot into ragdoll. And just take a moment there, relaxing. And again, palms together, inhaling and extending toward the ceiling, heart high. So again, just take a moment in that back bend if you love it, or just stay stretching up through the whole spine. Exhale, follow your hands, be in the process, don't rush into right bend. As you get all the way down, just take a moment and breathe, slide those hands up, get into that nice flat back straight position. And again, bending your knees, bring the hands to the mat, Step the left foot back, lunge position. Keep the front knee over the ankle and press back through the heel and keep that chest moving forward. And then palms to the mat, stepping back into plank position. Get your body as nice and straight as you can. Get that core supporting you, not sagging through the hips. You can bring your knees to the floor if you need to. And then we are all going to bring the knees down. We'll lead with your chest and chin, bending your elbows. Bring your heart to the floor first, keeping the hips up, and then sliding forward into the cobra. You can come up as high or as not high as you want in cobra. Just get that chest and chin forward, and then tuck the chin back a little so the neck gets a good stretch. Again, hands don't position, they just don't support, they just position. Pull the elbows in towards your side. Get that heart nice and open. Breathe into the back bend as much as you need to. You can be lower toward the floor or you can be as high into that low cobra as you want. And then pressing into your hands. I'm going to come up and back and into down dog. So go ahead and position yourself. Find your V shape. Keep that chest pulling back toward your legs, head toward your hands, everything in a nice straight V position. So keep the hips bent right at the hip joint, not the waist, and the whole wrist, elbows, shoulders, hips straight. Keep pulling back through the hips, through the sitting bones, down through the heels out through the crown. And then taking your left foot forward, same thing we did before. You can come up on your toes, or you can just mindlessly do it because sometimes that's a little bit easier to make that step. So left foot right under your, left heel right under your knee, coming back into that lunge position, making sure everything is nice and square toward the floor. And then push off the back foot and into ragdoll. And inhale, bringing your hands again up toward the ceiling. So keep looking at your hands as you expand through the heart and chest and into the back bend if you love it. This time we're going to separate the hands, palms toward the floor as you pivot forward with your back nice and flat, keeping your arms right at shoulder level. Swan dive and drop into ragdoll. As you get down into ragdoll, just take a moment to lift your sitting bones, and then again, sliding your hands up onto your shins, coming to that straight back stretch halfway up. Bend your knees, hands to the mat, right foot back into the lunge position, and press out through the heel. Knee over your ankle, toes straight ahead, Arms right under your shoulders, hands right under your shoulders. And this time, let's bring the knee to the floor again. Slide the toes back. And if you like, you can stay there, or you can bring your hands to your front knee, or you can sweep them up and come into a little bit of an arc. So looking up, chest high, shoulder blades down. And then exhaling, hands back to the floor. And tuck your toes under, coming back into the lunge. Press into your hands. Let's go into down dog this time. So just step that front foot back and find your V shape. 
Press the sitting bones up, head towards your hands. Get that nice flat back and straight body in both the legs and the body, torso arms. And then again, how about come up onto your toes, bending your knees, bringing your knees to the mat. And elbows in, chest and chin down, and slide again into the cobra. So you can keep your hands on the floor, or you can bring them behind you and clasp and push your hands toward your feet. Crown toward the ceiling, chin a little bit tucked so that neck gets a good stretch. So breathe, chest forward, and then releasing hands under you. Tuck your toes, and coming again up into down dog. So find your down dog position, get nice and straight. Ribs back toward your thighs, sitting bones up, head reaching toward your hands. Breathe. Then we're going to take the right foot between the hands. So step it up, then get your position back into your lunge. Hips nice and low. And then pushing forward, relax again, and rip. And palms together as you inhale. And again, go ahead and extend all the way up, looking at your hands toward the ceiling. Come into the back bend if you love it, or not, your choice. And exhaling, follow your hands. And again, oh, you can do that in swan dive. So swan dive forward, keep your back flat, palms toward the floor. Right that shoulder. And relax down into your leg. Slide up into that halfway up stretch. Get a nice, good, long spine. Chin in just a little bit. And bending your knees, hands to the mat, and left foot into lunge. So find your position. And bring the knee behind you to the floor. Slide the toes back and sweep up or hands to the knee or just stay in your lunge. So come into the position as much as you like. And then exhaling, bring your hands to the mat. Tuck the toes under, lift the knee and step into down dog. And again, position yourself so that the arms are right by your Ears are right by your arms, shoulders toward the waist, and sitting bones lifting. Reach your head toward your hands, don't tuck your chin. And again, we're going to shift forward and come into chest to the floor, and slide into cobra, staying with your hands on the floor. Or clasp the opposite way behind you. And again, lift the knuckles toward your feet. Lower body does nothing in Cobra. It just sinks down. And you can be as deep into it as you want to be. Remember, the more you push toward your heels and get into the back bend, the more your lower back is in that Cobra. So don't go too far if that's a challenge. And then releasing, hands to the neck. Toes tucking under. We're going to again come up into down dog. And we're going to take the left foot forward. So find your down dog position, get nice and straight, and then step forward with your left foot. Press back through the heel, hips low. And then stepping forward, relax as you're in. Right dog. Inhale, bring your hands up and to your heart. And take a moment there just in mountain pose. Kind of feel all the circulation, noticing how your body is working this morning. And then we're going to inhale, bring your arms up, pivot forward and again down. And come all the way to the floor and into child's pose for our transition. So take a moment there, just relaxing. And then bring your hands out in front. Hand of hands toward the sides of the mat if you'd like. We're going to pivot up, slide the feet back, drop the hips, and come all the way down 
into resting crocodile. The head to one side, shoulders down, feet relaxed, and upper body sinking. On an exhalation, turn your head to the opposite side so your neck gets stretched evenly on both sides. And again, just relax. And now we're going to turn the face toward the mat. You can bring your forehead to the floor, hands under your shoulders. Relax through the lower body. We're going to do another cobra. So here, hip width apart, sink down through your hips. Relax through the whole bottom of your body, all your legs and hips, just soft. And then inhaling, face forward, crown up, tuck the chin back toward your chest, and come as high into the cobra as you want. So you can keep your elbows bent, you can keep your forearms on the floor and just do a sphinx, or you can press up even higher into the cobra if you like it. But it's going to be more into the low back if you do that. So what you want to do as you're in Cobra is just relax through that lower body. It does nothing. And we're going to do a twist here. So lengthen through the spine, through the crown. And even if you're low toward the floor, you can still do this twist. Kind of turn your whole body and look to see if you can see the foot. Take a breath. Just relax. So you're turning from the hips, ribs, and shoulder, not just turning your head. So even if you're down in a low cobra, turn your whole body to the side as you look back toward that foot. So as deep into your twist as you want to go, and then return facing forward, and exhale, and release your cobra all the way back down. Forehead to the floor. Take a moment there, just relaxing. And of course, we're going to twist to the opposite side. So once more, inhale, face forward, crown up, chest forward and up, chin tucking back in. Stay there, forearms on the floor or hands on the floor coming a little higher. Or you can actually press into the hands for a higher cobra if you want to. And again, just as high as you want. Shoulders should stay down away from your ears, shoulder blades towards your waist, even if you're pressing into your hands. Chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling. Lengthen through the spine, whatever height you are at. And exhale and turn, hips, ribs, and shoulder, looking back toward your foot. Again, as deep into your twist as you want to go, whether you're in the high cobra or the low cobra, it doesn't matter. Just get a nice twist through your spine. And then returning, facing forward. Exhale, and slowly come to the mat. And then hands under your shoulders and press into child's pose. And take a moment there to breathe. So for our relaxation today, you can stay in child's pose. You can go onto your belly into resting crocodile. You can go flip over into corpse position. Or if you've got a wall near you, you can do legs up the wall. Yes, we're going to try that today. So if you want to do that, you can bring your mat to the wall if you have a mat with you, or just find a good place next to the wall. And then stick with the side of your body next to the wall. And then you can pull your knees in and Work your legs up the wall. And then kind of bend your knees and pull your sitting bones as close to the wall as you can. And then you want your heels right above your hips as you're in that legs up the wall position. Or be in whatever relaxation posture you want. So go ahead and allow your body to just relax in whatever position you're in. And make any adjustments you need to. Hands, palms up to keep those shoulders releasing. Down into the surface beneath you, no matter what position you're in. Take a moment to breathe. Again, let that belly be soft. Expanding as you fill your lungs completely. 
And exhaling, letting all the toxins, tension out. Just relaxing your whole body. And just keep breathing, releasing tension, sinking into that surface beneath you. I just let Mother Earth, as always, take that support. And let your body relax even further. So just body growing heavier, deepening into that earthbound connection. Just let it go. And as you breathe, sink your body into the earth embrace. And allow your awareness to release your body, allowing other thoughts to flow into your mind. And as those other thoughts come, just let them go as well. As always, there's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts come in and out as easily as you want, just disappearing without attention. And it is the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts, so they'll keep coming, but just keep breathing them away. No need to pay attention to any thought. Just let them all go. And as you breathe more deeply, and your body sinks further into that earth embrace, just allow your awareness to release your body and your mind. And find the peace within. Just fill your mind with peace. Fill your body with peace. Just be peace. And if you want to keep relaxing, feel free to do that. Or just begin drawing energy and awareness back to the moment, to your room, to your body. And as you begin breathing more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, allowing yourself to get ready for that yoga hug of appreciation. So pressing your back down. If your legs are up the wall, you can just draw them toward your heart. Give yourself that good hug. We're in whatever position you are. Just appreciate your yoga work and the work your body does every day. And when you're ready to release, just roll over to the side and sit back up and get ready for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me today.